Hey everybody, it's Eric Dom here, and I'm here to talk to you about your favorite new app. I'm sure you guys have already heard us talk about it, but the reason we're doing it is because it's an important app. It's called Mindset, and Mindset is a platform that brings you exclusive, personal stories and life lessons from your favorite artist. We hope that you as a listener will be able to better understand and connect with your favorite artists. And guess what? We just launched our newest artist, Usong of the Rose. Woo! Give it up, baby. And this is the first time Usong is opening up about his life story. From immigrating to the U.S., to his own mental health journey, to dealing with eating disorders, to his dream of becoming a football player. Wait, did I just give that away? I hope I didn't give it away. But you guys, really, truly, this mindset collection has so much in it and it's super raw it is super vulnerable and you guys are going to absolutely love it you can go listen to wuzong's mindset collection on the mindset app now you can start listening for free you are going to absolutely love it so go download the app go to get mindset g-e-t-m-i-n-d-s-e-t dot com or search mindset by dive studios on your app store to find us now again that's get mindset g-e-t-m-i-n-d-s-e-t dot com and we'll see you on the app. It's the Tebak Show. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tebak Show. It's your host, me, Eric Nam. And today, uh, I'm very excited um, because we have a legend on the show. We have the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, sitting next to me here on my left. And I'm a little nervous because I haven't I haven't seen him in a very long time. So there's so much to catch up on. And I, I'm i sure it's going to be very entertaining for everybody here. But I don't know why I'm nervous. But I'm nervous gonna, too, man. You're nervous? Am I not supposed to buddy one? No, you can do whatever okay. you want. <laughs> I just, I just keep you can do whatever you nervous. want. But uh, you guys, this is going to be a great episode. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. So be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end. If you guys want to see the video of this, you can go check it out at youtube.com slash dive pods or youtube.com slash dive studios. Of course, we have a lot of cool digital content things. So check it out on all our socials at the dive studios. And without further ado, we're going to introduce introduce the man of the hour. The man, the myth, the legend, Tiger JK. Thank you, brother. Of course. Good of course. to be here. Welcome. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Um, first, if, can you say hi to all of our listeners? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tiger JK. I'm, it's my honor to be here. And man, what a beautiful set. Thank you. you thank here. you. Thank you. Oh, sh- my bad. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No, but you should get comfortable. <laughs> no, I know. No, That's okay. the thing about podcast mics. They're great, but like it forces us to kind of sit. If you want to put them… Am I going to mess up the feng shui? No, no. You can do it's whatever cool. you want. Yeah. I'm not do as… Do that. You know. Young as you are, the youthful energy. <laughs> you look just what as young. Beautiful set. Thank man. you. I need to step up my game. It's no, you. Crazy. I mean, what are you talking about? You have a label, dude. You have nah. a lot of things. You're, you're, you know, nah, you've been it's, killing it's it. Crazy, really. Thank crazy. you so much. Thank you for coming. Um, I guess, man, for me, I was like, how do I start this this conversation? Because there is so much that I want to ask you that I want to talk about with you, but to kick it off, I guess. How have you been? You know, just living. Yeah. Um, stuck. Like that's the question that um I always get. Like I get into a uh, deep thought. Mm. Yeah, man. That's why you know now you know why I don't do a lot of interviews. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> you kind of you kind of you you start thinking you start getting. I start too thinking. Deep. Yeah. All right. Well, rather than asking you that, how yeah, are you doing? Philosophical then? questions yeah. already. You hit me with a. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, how about how about well, I'll lead you with other questions so we right. get a sense of how you're doing. But right. I guess. <clears throat> For for a lot of people, like you you debuted and you came to Korea. I mean, you were born here, you lived right. here for a while, and then you moved to the States and you came back to Korea in ninety four. Ninety four, right? Ninety four, ninety five around. Ninety four, ninety five. 95. Yeah. So you've been in this game for a while. Right. And so for a lot of people who have grown up um with an interest in Korean culture and Korean hip hop right. um and music, they all know who you are, Drunken Tiger, Tiger JK, MFBTY, all the many, many projects and things that you've done. Eric and I'm Mace. Too kind, man. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> too serious. kind. But, oh, man. but for, for a lot of people, a lot of the, I guess, like the younger generation of mm. K-pop lovers, they may right. not be as familiar True. with who you are. Right. So is there, you know, how do you like to introduce yourself to people that you meet for the first time? 
Uh, just Tiger JK, man. Yeah. That's it. You know, I just… As long as, you know, they're willing to get to know me, that's mm. fine. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not really… I don't think about time mm. or, you know, th- these great accolades or even mm. like, you know, they call it legacy. Mm-hmm. I really don't trip on it or think about it. Mm. It's only when I do interviews. Mm. I realize, oh man, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you probably sensed it, man. I'm very uncomfortable with my own skin. Really? Oh, yeah, I think that that was a sort of my drive huh. to be comfortable. Uh. You know, everybody say, um, truth is, you know, something that you need to be. You know, you need to be. To live out. Kind right? Of thing. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to live a lie. Uh-huh. You want to be honest and, and be truthful. Right. And be true to who you are. But me, it was other way around. Mm. I think I started doing um, music because I wasn't too comfortable uh-huh. with who I was. So I wanted to be a professional liar. Really? Lic- wow. License to lie. Uh-huh. I think I have right to embellish. You know what I'm saying? Polish. But based on true story though. So… Uh, to answer your question, man, yeah. uh, as long as people are willing to get to know me, yeah. that's fine. And, um, you know, hopefully they are interested in, you know, what I got to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's I feel it, like you, you have so much to say and you, you use it. You say it through your music and, and through the interviews. The very rare occasions on which you do interviews. Which is why when, when I heard that you were down to come on the show, I was like, wait, what? Man, of course. I'd love to. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm, I'm thankful and, and I hope that this conversation is… It's just a great conversation and, yeah. and I hope that our listeners and our viewers walk away uh, understanding your world and who you are a little bit more and the, and the incredible things that you have done and, and the things that you have to say. Thank so, you, man. So I'm excited. Um, but for people who don't know… Yes, I keep saying this but the dude's a, the dude's a legend. I mean so many of us, so many particularly nah, nah. in the world of hip-hop… Have looked up to you for for years, for decades, right. quite quite literally. But I guess going back to it, how did you end up coming back to Korea in around ninety four, ninety five, and starting music? Was it always something you wanted to do, or you kind of fell into it? What what was music to you at that time? Right, everything happened by accident. Mm. Like all my life, everything's just accidental. You know mm. what I mean? And coincidental. I love music though. Mm-hmm. My father, you know, I still. Own like, like forty thousand record like LPs. Like physical. Physical, yeah. Then my father 000? inherited. Yeah, he was you know what? he loved music. He was the first uh, sort of DJ slash um, uh, critic. Uh, music critic. Music cr- uh-huh. uh, critic. Also, he was a writer for Billboard. Oh wow! You know what I mean? He was a journalist. All that. So I think he influenced me a mm. lot. You know, growing up. Um, you call me a legend, but you know, it's not true. Like just like legendary artists, mm-hmm. right? They are all in my house. Mm-hmm. Talking about culture, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. current event about um, stories and ideas. Yeah. I see a lot of athletes and artists and you know, singers just jamming and talking, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it was like a hippie environment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that was subconsciously like really from age of like when I was a baby mm-hmm. instilling me. And when I went to the States, I got into hip hop because I was like this oddball. First Miami, Florida. I moved yeah. to Miami, Florida. Um, it was like a full Asian kid in the whole community. Yeah. Like I'm talking about the, like the state. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, two of them, my cousins. Uh-huh. And one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some, some, some. You're, you're like rare, rare people yeah. in Miami. In Miami, I was yeah. really rare. And whatever I say from this moment on, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm taking you to… Um, I'm we're taking it back. Taking it back yeah. and we're going to time travel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So please… What year is this? What year is this? Oh, man, it was like early 90s. Early 90s, oh, okay. You know, like 89, 90, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man. From there, like I connected with people who… Uh, so to listen to the music that I'm doing now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Miami, not so much though. It wasn't too segregated. Mm. It was a lot of… Um, um, although I was one of a few Asians there, mm-hmm. you know, it, was, it wasn't a, a racism I was dealing with. Mm-hmm. It was more ignorance. Yeah. They don't, you know… Because they just didn't know. Yeah, you know, everybody's story, right? They call me Chino. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. You know, that was my nickname, Chino, yeah. Chino. And, um, you know, everybody was bowing to me. Mm. My first day of my school, man, my English teacher bowed to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I walked in the class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was late. I didn't know. I didn't even know how to uh, find a class. Yeah. It was like I was on my own. Mm-hmm. My father basically put me in a plane, put me on a plane, and, and just sent me off. From Korea. From Korea. He was uh, he was stationed, or he he had to move to LA uh-huh. for his job, right? Yeah. I have two sisters. Mm-hmm. My grandma, my mom has two sisters, and you know, they had friends back then. I'm always surrounded by like 30 girls. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? My pop's busy. He's always out traveling the world, writing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Finding stories. So um, what my uh, aunties will do is… Because they have to, you know, help my mom and stuff, mm-hmm. right? So when my pop's out working, um, they will take my sisters and maybe the only boy in the family. Mm-hmm. They would take me to like this hair shop. Mm-hmm. You know, they call it Mizawan back in the yeah. day, right? And, we'll, you know, they'll braid my hair and mm-hmm. like, you know, just… They'll kill time. Yeah. So, one day my pop's like, yo, man, I want my son to be a man. I want him mm-hmm. to be a leader. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I want him to be strong. Mm-hmm. I want him to be able to protect the family. Yeah. So, he moved to LA with my sisters and he just sent me off to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Alone. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> because my my uncle at the time, uh-huh. uh, he already he was living there. Okay, two of my cousins, and he he was running a taekwondo school. Uh-huh. So he thought it was a great idea to just send me off, and just you to know be with a bunch of dudes, bunch of dudes, and be a man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was my experience, man. I didn't speak uh, like Korean. I mean English. Yeah, and everything was foreign to me. I, of course, like, yeah. Well, you know, it's like all blur, man. I remember like getting on the plane. And this lady's like, you know, it's like, rrr, 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 rrr. and you're just like, okay, don't, you know, yeah. ma, don't worry, right? And then next thing you know, um, I'm landing, and I remember just looking, everything looking kind of freaky, man, mm. just flat. Mm. It was brown. It was yeah. flat. You know what I'm saying? No mountains. It's Miami. I'm like, whoa, I'm going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, my, I did wrong. You know what I'm saying? My pop. Was, <laughs> It's not Souls too to happy. The devil. Yeah, he's not oh happy. Oh my gosh. Probably, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I didn't do my homework. <laughs> you know, probably he found out. Yeah. He's he's getting rid of me. I remember just crying like traumatized, oh. man. Landing and boom. Um, These people came to me and, and there was like mouthing. I think it was my name. Mm-hmm. And I was being carried away. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, and it was uh, my uncle's uh. spot. And it was crazy, man. And then, you know, I didn't even know, uh, like, I was always hanging out with my sisters, auntie, mm-hmm. and their friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I, I wasn't into, like, taekwondo or, like, something yeah. athletic like that, man. Yeah. Next day, I'm in the class. My <laughs> uncle is, like, a celebrity in that town. Uh, he, was, uh, he was teaching Miami SWAT team to… Oh, wow. This is when Miami Vice. There's a TV show called Miami right. Vice. The whole cast was learning. From your uncle? From my uncle. Wow. So think about it. It was like talk of the town. He was already like a celebrity. Uh-huh. And I'm this authentic… You know, the golden child mm. from mm. the motherland, right? Mm. So my uncle's like, yo, man. I got a class… I got a school to run. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Reputation to uphold. Yeah. So I'm a little kid and he… He puts a black belt around me. <laughs> <laughs> so long story short, man. That was sort of like my… You know, journey yeah. in the state. So I had to be someone else. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now you understand what yeah. I'm saying. Right? Like, I'm like, oh man, I'm not comfortable. Right. I don't want to throw no punches. Yeah. I don't want people bowing to me like I'm this prodigy. Mm-hmm. They all thought that I was this crazy Taekwondo <laughs> prodigy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, like Taekwondo Jesus pretty much. Exactly. The, the scent of oh my to Miami gosh. to, you know… Put on a show or something. Uh-huh. So I was protected though. Yeah. I was like a star of, you know, of my uh, uncle's school, mm-hmm. Taekwondo school. But next, you know, in school, when I was going to school, I was lost. Mm-hmm. I didn't speak the language. Yeah. Uh, always late. Yeah. Teachers are bowing to me. Every time teachers are bowing to me, you know, 
everybody's laughing at me. Yeah. So I didn't know what, what there was, man. Yeah. I was just always like… I remember being angry and, and embarrassed. Yeah. and You know what I'm saying? So that was sort of my uh, beginning. Mm-hmm. And… You know… Strange thing happened, man. It's like a movie. Like… You're past and one day I start re- uh, understanding what they're saying to me. It's like, woo, 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 hey, JK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> woo, 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 JK. Yeah. You want to hang out? Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I was yeah. like, oh. The whole time I was thinking, teachers disrespecting me. Uh-huh. Kids are making fun of me. The whole time, actually, they were trying to get to know me. Mm. I was like, oh, man. And then, of course, I when I started to understand what they're saying, um, I became sort of like a celebrity, too. The cool kid. Yeah, cool kid. Um I loved I love my uh yeah time in Miami. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I became a Florida Junior State champion. Oh. That's a different story too, man. Of Should I share it? State champion of what? Taekwondo? Taekwondo. Oh wow. So you have to uh win a trophy. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's business. Right. You know I mean? Right, right, right. You're the face of your uncle's yeah. academy. You have to. A lot of masters, man, you know, like man, these are X-Men of um like of Korea. Mm-hmm. These are like champions who like, you know, in the movies you see like people walking on the wall. Mm-hmm. Stuff like Sorry. that. These people are like X-Men. I, I've seen them like really walk on the wall and do crazy stuff. Yeah. These great um, treasures. Back then Korea didn't really respect them. Oh. They didn't respect athletes. Uh-huh. They only respected doctors and… Lawyers. You know <laughs> exactly. Entertainers. Singers and athletes, they clowned them. Uh, you know, they didn't respect them. Uh-huh. So they were sort of pushed out. Okay. In order to survive, you know, all they know is how to walk on, you know what I'm saying, walls yeah. and like crazy stuff. But then it wasn't respected. So mm. they all had to move out. So each state, these great masters uh, run taekwondo class mm-hmm. or school. And they're all competing, right, to keep the business. Yeah. And boom, my cousin's rebelling already. Cause you know, you don't want to listen to your pops. Yeah. They're all dope though. They're all black belt. Yeah. They don't want to compete no more. So one day, no, 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 we have to compete, man. JK, you're going to compete. I'm like, oh, man. You're the last hope. Last hope. <laughs> I went. I'm, I'm hating it. And I think I, the first round was with this champion. Mm. And I remember being so scared mm. and I didn't want to get hit. So right when it started, I just I just kicked his face. I'm like, what? <laughs> right? I don't remember. Yeah. And he he got knocked out. <laughs> he got knocked out, man. I'm like, man. How, 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 how is this happening? So I'm telling you, everything's by accidental. Uh, and um, I had to f- compete with three other. Yeah. Right? But all three of my like son of the, uh, this all master. Like, yeah. And I remember the face… The look on these masters are like, oh man, the kids forfeited, and that uh, will of some became Miami, Florida, uh, Florida state champion. That's because they all quit. Incredible. After, my, after you, they saw you kick somebody in the face. In the face, and, and, and <laughs> I didn't just knock. It was knocked out. Uh-huh. I felt really horrible. Another accidental. Boom! You know how war travel. This prodigy from Korea. Dude, you're like a you you're a before you were a music legend, you were a, a taekwondo <laughs> no, legend. I'm, I'm telling you, everything by happened by accident. Yeah. It wasn't like I was great at it. Uh-huh. Yeah, man, my life. I don't know, man. It, a lot of interesting. It's kind of crazy how life works that way, right? Yeah. What's that I hear? If I join the Dive Studios community text, I get to send questions and suggestions to the Dive team. And I get updates on new announcements. Unbelievable. I feel so loved. Go to bit.ly backslash dive community or text us at 310-564-1030 to join. This is currently only available to US and Canada numbers. Talk to you soon. That happened. Long story short, boom. And one day, you know, um, you know, I'm not sort of a, a, us taekwondo, uh, I just, you know, lack, lack of a better term, the athletes, they left us alone, mm-hmm. you know. But one day, it was just there having a bad day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's same old, the typical hallway, yeah. bumping shoulders. And 
And I was getting jumped. And once again, I'm just… I'm, I'm trying to protect myself. Instinct, ah. instinct. The kick came out. Kicked him in the face. And then boom. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how my… Uh, sto- you know, story in LA. So then you moved to LA. Then my father moved me to LA. And I hated that. Because uh. Miami was my life. Yeah. I had my first girlfriend. Uh. You know what I'm saying? I was a celebrity there. Uh, I love… You know… I, I love my friends. And this is when I… Thought I was Cuban. Mm. I mean, uh, everybody, so many people there are Cuban. I so. grew up, you know, like now, but yeah. yeah. Back then, I, I didn't know I had like this funky accent. I thought I was Cuban. I, I identify with them more. Uh-huh. Boom. My father's like, my son's gonna get killed. And then I, I, I hear my my uncle talking to my pops, like, yo, get him out of here. My, my uncle's like, no, it's not like that, you know? Uh-huh. Like, Miami's cool. My pops, like, no. And there was a shooting, though. Uh-huh. Not because of me. Yeah. Time to time, you know how. Yeah. Um, there's some shootings, you know what I'm saying? So my pop's like, no. It's time for uh, my son to be near me. Mm-hmm. That's how I moved to LA. Boom. I come to LA. I see a lot of Asians. Yeah. Diverse, different world. Different worlds. Like, oh. It's, you know, I really don't like uh, the situation. But man, it's got to be beautiful. You know, these people, you know, my people are here. Yeah. It was more segregated. Huh. It was more uh, beefs between Asian community had beef with, among themselves. Like that's a uh, 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 Japanese turf. That's Chinese turf. That's Vietnamese. Like it was crazy. Mm. Po- uh, you know, her politic going on. That's just among uh, within the Asian community. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Even Korean community, um, what they call you hacks. You know. Mm. I ain't trying to like degrade. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm saying back then like this you hawk sayings and you know what they call FOBs. Yeah. You know like FOBs, you hawk sayings and then the first second generation. And I see like uh, a lot of Korean people like acting as though they don't speak the language. Hmm. Now am I like… No, no, no. Off? No, no, no. It's, and just for, just for clarity, you hawk saying is like students who are… Studying, right. right? There's there's students from abroad, and then FOBs is is a term that was used for like people who just immigrated, right. um, and then there's like your first, second generation Korean, Korean Americans right. there. So there's a lot of different generations and different pockets of people, I imagine, True. who True. may or may not get along. You know. Before I continue, man, thank you for the cheers, coffee, man. Cheers to the to the coffee man, and the water. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, Man, anybody out there, please sponsor <laughs> Eric. Man. Uh, yeah, yeah, you guys, I just Barista. poured in some coffee. And, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Best. Uh, I only feel like I'm in Miami. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Anyways, okay, so you go to LA, your dad pulls you over to LA, you're readjusting. How long were you, were, were you in LA before you, I, were you shipped off to Korea? Or how did that work? No, I was in LA, you know, uh, Glendale. Like yeah. the Glendale, Hoover High School. It was the safest school. That, you know, like a lot of Korean community, uh, Korean people. Yeah. So they, my pop moved me to uh, Hoover. And boom. Now I get in a fight with… I get caught in between the crossfire between Korean gang and Armenian gang. <laughs> and now they're telling me to pick a side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of Wait, Armenians… Uh, can we… We should talk <laughs> separately about making a… A TV show about your life or a movie. Yes, I'm happy. Yo, hook me up, man. Dude, let's Thank do you. it. I Thank just I, I feel like so. this is some incredible stuff. I feel like there are gonna be a lot of gangs involved mm. and uh oh, yeah, different it was heavy. 90s in LA was crazy. crazy. I think it'd be a lot of yeah. uh it'd be very interesting to see play out on TV. Thank you, man. I mean, I never really got to share my story, man. This yeah. is, thank you for having me. No, man. of it's course. Like, I couldn't really talk about things like this, you know. Huh. Any there's no other platforms I could share my story. So I'm all over the place. They'll ask me, no, how no. are you? You know, in Korean, Yen, and like, you can't, you can't say a good question. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. Always, I always get stuck. Uh, how are you is like the question. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm in a trance. Like, yeah. hmm, how am I? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you know how most of the time I was edited. Mm. So a lot of times they thought that I was like this off kid. Mm. Trying to be off for the sake of being artistic. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And and this sort of became my image. And yeah. I started getting typecasted, man. Uh, but, you know, I couldn't really argue. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. it's so, such fast pace. And yeah. you don't have, you know, more than like a minute to really express yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it's a fight, on, it's a fight. On, on TV to, to get a yeah. minute or two. So In this situation, I just kind of like, you know, Chill. later right. But, yeah. you know, but feel free to cut me off. No, 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 no. I tend to do this. <laughs> it's all good. That's the biggest beef between me and Tasha. <laughs> Get to the point, JK. <laughs> Get to the point. Get to the point. You know what I mean? You know what? We'll probably we're gonna have to we're gonna do a, an extended cut and then a, right. and a, and a, a radio cut or something. Right. But Please, to me, me off, this though. is all really really interesting because I think backstory is so important to knowing right. and informing who you are and how you create the music and the art that you create. Right. Right. So I mean, we're to the point where you have to choose between the Korean gang. And the Armenian, Armenian gang. Armenian gang and I didn't know. Who did you choose? I couldn't choose. So… Think about it man. LA… The fashion… Even fashion wise… I'm so off. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like long hair. Yeah. Right? Z Cavriti. Latin pants. Latin okay. pants. You know what I mean? With, with silky… I, I'm imagining like Bruno Mars or something right now in my head. Silk Sonic. <laughs> I'm thinking Bruno I'm Mar fresh. You're right. <laughs> but but you know, everybody's like, man, this is odd kid. Like, what is uh, he, what is he doing here? Yeah. Right. And then I'm talking like Cuban. It was just all bad, right? But because of that, um, a lot of Mexicans or Armenians or uh Persian kids sort of like took me under. They they kind of uh -huh. liked hanging out with me. Uh -huh. Right. So I wasn't really Accepted or welcome <laughs> in any uh, community, but uh, these kids kind of you know accepted. Yeah. So I was cool with them, but at the same time, by blood, I see my people get into trouble. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. like I will always step in yeah. and try to be the. And they kick uh, them in the face. Yeah. No, no, just peacemaker. <laughs> you know, yeah. that happened too. But you know, but I will always try to make peace. You know, what I yeah. mean, and be the mediator. But one day, you know, LA was something different. Like mm -hmm. it was really getting heavy. You mm -hmm. know. Uh, it was like some really like dangerous yeah. life and death situation. And they're like, yo, pick pick a side. They're like, yo, pick a side. And and I said F you to everyone. Everyone. Yeah. And that didn't really, you know what I'm saying? They Went well. And my yeah. father's like, yo, what's going on? So I, I moved to um different high school. Mm. And but I connected with I guess, sort of suicide squad, if you will, like, you know, whoever accepted me wasn't really… They too were sort of isolated. Mm. You know what I mean? Kind of outcast, outcast. like outlier kind right. of thing. Okay. You go to a new school. You have new friends. All kind of suicide squad of people who don't fully fit in. Right. And then that's how… Like, they introduce you to, to hip-hop or… I mean, from Miami, you know, I was yeah. into hip-hop, but… LA was this when I really got into it heavy. You uh -huh. know, like, you know, um, a lot of my friends actually they uh they rapped. Uh -huh. You know. Um, I was like their biggest hype man. I really loved the culture and like the vibe and the music. Yeah. And I would just tag along with them. You mm -hmm. know, LA was just I'm sure like it was like that in New York, mm -hmm. you know, wherever hip hop was blooming. Yeah. But it's the early stage, you know what I'm saying? They call it golden era, but like everybody, you know, if you look like you you rhyme and you'll get hit up. Like you rhyme, what's your you know, what's your name? And then boom, like circle, everybody's you know, in a side for freestyling, yeah. battling. And those are the, you know, culture, like every every weekend and we'll hit up all the uh, open mic, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And and try to have our homies battle the best from there. Mm -hmm. You know. So there was the thing, man. And I never thought that I would become a rapper or, you know, it was just like I was enjoying the vibe. But I would get into it. We'll make, you know, mixtapes. We'll try to record and things like that. And, you know, me being, I think, um, the only Korean kid who was into hip hop, I had like, you know, I was decked on uh, Car Kanai. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like mm -hmm. really deeply in it. Mm -hmm. And my uncle moved to LA. From Miami? From Miami. Because uh -huh. my uncle missed my father. You know, his, his brother. Yeah. So he moved to uh, LA and, and he opened up a Taekwondo, taekwondo thing. thing again. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so you have braids and now you're doing… You're yeah. popping, kicking people in the face. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what happened was… 
um, I will invite all my friends, uh-huh. right, to my taekwondo class. My uncle, my father accepted, uh-huh. welcomed them, yeah. gave them free uniform, and uh-huh. sort of gave them a place to hone their skill. You uh-huh. know, taekwondo class or school guy, you know, one side is just huge mirror, right. So B boys, you know, I'm saying like MCs, they will come and break dance and practice. You know, after class after is class, over, yeah. it was like the spot to hang out at. Mm. You know what I mean? And they will invite me to, you know, their spot. A lot of more uh, gang members, mm-hmm. you know, but it was it was very different. Mm-hmm. You know, they uh, they became. This is a different chapter, but they became gang because they were born into the area. Mm. So my Asian friends were in. Uh, uh, it was crazy because they will hide it. You know what I'm saying? They hide it from their parents. Right. You know what I mean? They knew how to be incognito. Mm. Crazy. They're like, this. I'm not glorifying. I'm saying back then. Yeah. They will hide it from their parents, and right. they, they will like be afraid of moms and stuff. But, yeah. So I'm thinking like, oh, this is crazy. But they accepted me. Because our family accepted them and mm-hmm. whenever they need, we'll help them. It's so kind and of like a safe space. Right. Yeah. And they will invite me to like barbecue mm-hmm. or um, their meetings and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember like, oh, what's up, uncle? Or like, you know, cousins, uncles, mom, like, like, yo, that's your uncle. You got to hide your bandana, man. Like, what's up? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. You know, and then they're all from the same gang. Uh, so I'm like, okay. And I started learning. I'm not saying that uh, people that listen to music, uh, hip-hop music are all gangsters. What I'm saying is that was my environment. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? That's how you got into yeah. it and you learned it. And they used to mess with me. Like, you know, they'll freestyle. And and once in a while, they'll just push me in a circle. Just to… It was like a prank. You know what I yeah. mean? Hey, come on, Jay. Push me. And, and they would like hype me like I'm like the best… You know, just to see me choke and yeah. you know, get clown. Yeah. That was about it. You know, so I started uh, getting into it. Not because I'm good at it. Uh, what it got me was hip-hop and their lifestyle got me uh, confidence. Mm. Like, you know, whatever I say, they were hyping me. They were being nice. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yay! You know, I come up with like one line that rhymed. They're like, ah! And that's how I really got in- into uh, this hip hop culture, and yeah. like I started, you know, uh, tagging my first MC name was Elevated Eye. Elevated Eye. Elevated uh-huh. Eye, because you know, eight, eight, we Asiatic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, at the same yeah. time, it's not the eye, we, you know, the being is elevated, we're different, like we're mass spiritual, like yeah. it was my MC name. And, you know, word traveled quickly, you know what I mean? Like, you know, because me being Korean kid, you know, just being down and, you know, being in, in every cipher, right. and, and that got picked up. In like a local, local newspaper, and it got picked up by um, uh, rest in peace, uh, Johnny Yoon. He's uh, he's a pretty known uh, comedian. Uh-huh. Uh, he was a renowned Korean comedian. That that he made like this crazy Hollywood movie too, man. They oh, really? still call me Bruce. Oh, I you know, I'll have check to check it, it out. Yeah. yeah, and he had a talk show, like American talk show. Oh. Yeah. Like, you know, Johnny Carson, like Jimmy yeah, Fallon. Yeah, yeah. He had one of those shows and he invited me to… Uh, to be on the show. To, to be on the show. And that sort of like trickled down. And, and I guess in Korea, some folks peeped that. Oh, wow. And one of them was JP. JP? Kim Jin Pyo. Who's that? Uh, oh, Kim yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he started like this, you know, they call it Tongari. Like, yeah, it's like, like a, not really a fan club. A but, club, right. an organiza- a loose organization, right. kind of. And that's how it all got started. Like, wow. he invited me to one of the hip hop seminars. And, and this is during time where. This is early, this is not what, 90? Yeah, yeah. Early 90s. Early 90s, early 90s, 94, around there. Yeah. And K Town, if you go to K Town, like this vending machine for new, uh, newspaper, uh-huh. Korean newspaper, right? Yeah. And on the way to my uh, the Taekwondo school, yeah, my friends will pick up the newspaper for yeah. me because they just thought that because I'm Korean, like <laughs> it's something cool. Like, hey man, I got you. And I remember, like the for like whole month, every time, and the front page was like hip hop. 
mm. like hip hop mm. groups such and such. Mm. It was all hip hop, like mm. hip hop takeover. Mm -hmm. So my friends got super excited. Yeah, they always wanted to go to you know the motherland of taekwondo. Yeah, they wanted to all visit Kukiwan. That's like a yeah. headquarter of taekwondo, right? Yeah, and they're like, "Yo, man, our culture is blowing up." Yeah, in Korea, I think we should go. You know, there was a talk and JP inviting us. We came out. We weren't planning to stay. We're just, you know, let's go check it out yeah. and like, you know, spread, you know, words. You yeah. Know? And it was like maybe eight people. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Eight members. Like a crew. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the oh, seminar. Oh, the entire thing? The entire thing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I thought it was eight people from LA. The entire eight thing was people. eight people with some music critics and like, I don't know how they, you know. <laughs> so the seminar had eight people. Eight people, man. And you flew cafe. in from LA yeah. to be a part of this. Yeah, man. And then… And I'm like… My, my friends tell me like… What happened to all the MCs, man? Like yeah. the newspaper. Yeah. And what it was was back then like… The dance music was popping. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? The uh, revolution of… You know what I'm K -pop. saying? K-pop. K-pop. Pre-K-pop. Right. Like, you know. And they got the fashions. Uh, a lot of b-boys, you know. Yeah. They, a lot of them are dancers. You know what I mean? So… And… The hip hop what we knew wasn't really right. You know, different. It was different. Yeah. And you know, we decided to just um, train, just you know, um, find find uh, hip hop. Not even find hip hop culture. Like find whoever into the type of music we're into. Mm. Like we just wanted to you know to kind of share that and yeah. to experience it together. Yeah. There was a uh, there was my early. Sort of experience mm -hmm. and and you know it was just a, it was crazy man yeah yeah I remember like people were following me I didn't even the way I dress the way I walk I had like kids following me around your swagger yeah man it just it was just met different you know what yeah. I mean baggy pants with like braided hair yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you know I got so much I was limping and, you know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> it was just crazy but. I came here with um, one black dude and one white dude. Uh -huh. And industry wasn't too accepting of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's different. Yeah. Uh, so that's… Long story longer, man. That's my answer to you. Uh, but that's, that's how I got into hip hop. That's fascinating. I mean, I, I, it's clear that you've had so much… So many different influences from different cultures and different people in your life. And it… The, the thing that's so fascinating to me is that, like you were saying, everything seems accidental. Accidental. Everything seems like just it kind of happened. Right. You were put in a situation, a place and a time, and you just reacted. And the natural reaction then was you ended up becoming who you are today. Which is incredible. But so what… You know, you come to Korea. You check it out. Was there like an immediate record label or a deal? Or like how did… How, how did staying in Korea to pursue music happen? Um, in the industry, for some reason, like, I was known. Mm. You know, it was back then where every group, every label was looking for a Korean-American kid. Mm. Um, who could sort of act like they rap. Mm. You know, they needed that person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everybody, a, a lot of labels approached me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We heard about you. I heard that you're a rapper from L.A. Um, half of the labels approached me because they wanted me to ghostwrite, mm. you know, come up with a hook, or like you know, and their their definition of ghostwriting a rap is how do you fill up two bars? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was easy money. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yo yo, be like oh that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what about here? Check it, check it out. Oh, that's great. <laughs> But easy money meaning they yeah. will uh, they will invite me to their session yeah. and, and they will just play their record. Mm. They're like, "Yo, we need you to rap here, right?" And I go in. I'm like, "Yeah, uh, that's it." <laughs> so I'm like, what? "I haven't even started it." And their idea of rap was a yeah. uh, bridge. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Full bar bridge or something mm. like that. I'm like, "Oh man, the, come on, man. There's more to it that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I couldn't really get through them. Yeah. But." I came to Korea with no money. Yeah. 
two pair of jeans and one white shirt. <laughs> white you got to make it work. Yeah. So I was just going, you know, uh, studio, studio, just saying some dumb. And, and I would just, they'll feed me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. McDonald's and like, you know, with, with drinks and yeah. So I did that, man. And some labels, they wanted me to sign, uh, sign with them. And, uh, you know, but they're all asking me to, uh, I have to first, you know, uh, learn how to dance. You know what I'm saying? And also relearn my rhythm. Uh-huh. And they'll play all these Kayo. Yeah. The, the dance music that was popping. No knock on them. Yeah. These producers and label, you know, owners were like, yo, you need to do this to blow yeah. up out here. You know what I'm saying? You can't wear these crazy raggedy, you know, I'm like your pants too baggy and mm-hmm. and you might also need like surgery. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You cannot blow up out here. Back goes, you're too tall. <laughs> you're too tall. Yeah, you're too tall. Your clothes aren't right. Yeah. Your what, music's what the f- kind of name is that? Tiger JK. <laughs> Only uh, you could only become a wrestler with that <laughs> name, right? So like, you need to change your name. Uh, Tiger JK is too long. Uh, um, you definitely need Sankapur. You know, a, oh my gosh, uh, you know, a yeah. Sankapur. Do you need to explain it to the double double eyelids? Double like, eyelids. You eyelids. You're too tall, so you don't stand, don't stand straight. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just kind of slouch yeah, over. Don't talk with the chest out, like you know what I mean. It was just crazy, man. It yeah. was wild time. And then I was getting called like, you know, but every time, like maybe this time is different. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I will go mm-hmm. and they're like, mm-hmm. dance. Like, I want you to dance for me. You know what I mean? I was like, nah, man, I don't dance, man. They're like, but you are uh, hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, like, nah. you are hip hop. You dance. Yeah. Check, check. Hip hop. So, you oh, know, man. those were my early, early days, man. It, uh, it was just crazy. That's wild. But, okay, so… But you ended up staying. Did you you signed to a label? I, I, signed, I assume I signed to a label. We had a we had an album that that me and my friends made. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like it was horrible quality. You know, we just we thought we the the illest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. made an album just to rock shows in LA, like uh-huh. talent shows or like you know, it's like a demo. Yeah, it's called Enter the Tiger, and we we got signed, and they were able to book me like two TV shows. Mm. And after the TV show, you should have seen the look on these kids, the audience. They're like this. Just in shock. <laughs> in shock. Some of them <laughs> mad dogging me, eyes grilling me, me mugging me. Some of them like, you know, closing their ears. It was just That's crazy. Wow. Um, I remember one PD walked up to me like, where's your stage clothes? Right? And mind you, one of my friends that came… Out with me, his name is uh, Sue Cram. Mm-hmm. He's uh, from Delicious Vinyl. Uh, there's a ill uh, rap group named Farside. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Farside, they, they're known for uh, 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 great, great songs, but you know, for your audience. Yeah. Uh, this song called Passing Me By is one of their songs. Like, okay. It's just crazy. Um, it was their baby project. Mm-hmm. You know, these all little kids that call. Um, Little Rascals. Mm-hmm. Super MCs. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Killing in every battles and stuff. Yeah. So one of them dude, he, you know, he take he took Taekwondo from my school and yeah. then we become we became really tight. And there was the original Drunken Tiger, it was him, uh, Mickey Eyes, three of us. So, you know, they all came out with like hat to the side, like, you know what I'm saying? Like Fed Adidas t shirt. With like Shalto Adidas, you know what I mean? Yeah. And baggy pants, we came out like, where's your stage show? Uh, stage clothes, man. You can't go on. That's right? it. You can't go on. Um, you gotta wear something different. And I remember uh, Sue Cram, my, my partner, man, he's like, what, what is he saying? It's like, yo, they say you can't wear the t shirt. It's like, all right, no problem. He takes the shirt off. <laughs> 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 I'm ready, let's go. And. <laughs> My, my homie's like, oh, we can't wear this? He takes a shirt off and he wears it upside. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, in, inside out. Inside out, like, yeah. Like, we ready. You know, you imagine like, man, they're like… And also, I had braids on. So, yeah. like, you can't wear braids. You can't wear braids? Yeah. Oh They'll God. ban you. Really? Yeah. You know… It's a different time. Words travel, man. Yeah. Like, these hoodlums. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> man, what's going on? Like, you know, and I think they scared uh, the label… 
they scared the label like, yo, mm. are you trying to kill us? Mm. Why, why, how the hell did you guys like, yeah. uh, what were we thinking sending these kids yeah. to our show? And they decided to not to, uh, you not know. Not to air it. Not to, no, not to uh, print the CDs. Oh. Like, yo, you know what? You know, it's all good. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you guys are, you know, not ready. Yeah. Uh, they tell me your uh, album is… All these professional engineers and PDs, they're calling them like, yo, they got these vinyl noises. Uh-huh. It's mixed wrong. Yeah. You know, the hip-hop, like, you know, the… Yeah. Our tracks will have like samples, you know, the yeah. vinyl noises. It's and different, we, we, yeah. We did that on purpose and they, they're like, yo, it's mixed wrong. And you know what? Something's they, wrong with the tape. Yeah, some song is wrong with the tape. And um, this song don't have choruses. <laughs> <laughs> they, they messed up and deleted it. Oh my god! Like it was… It was it's just a different world. It was a different world. Different man. understanding yeah. of what hip-hop or music could right. or should be. Not knocking on them, but it was yeah, that. Just, so yeah. like they were in horror, man. Yeah. And, and you know… A lot of kids in the audience crying, doing this didn't help. So, <laughs> um, we're free to go. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more that happened, but you know, um, it gets too heavy. So, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. another time. So, you know, um, we were hurt, disappointed, and there was that. Mm. And, and, and we just bounced. You're back, back to the States. Yeah, back to the States. Mm. And I remember hearing like, yo, his father, man, you know, he's a great, you know, he's a great thinker, writer. Music Man. critic. Yeah. yeah. His son went to LA and went ton crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he became… He became Yangachi. Oh man. Like he became like sort of like low life. Mm. You know. Like he became a thug. Uh. So my pop always supported me. Uh-huh. You know he loves art. You know, yeah. He always supported me. But then you know… Like I hated that. You know I feel like I'm like really messing up. With his legacy. Mm. So when I went back to LA, man, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna uh, take Taekwondo seriously. Yeah. And I really wanted to become an a instructor uh-huh. and own my Taekwondo school. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, no matter what I do, I'm gonna get into UCLA. Uh-huh. Just get the student ID yeah. to uh, flash it uh-huh. to those people who talk shit about my pops. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I wasn't really, I didn't care too much about really going to school. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, and my, my friend's like, what you gonna do? I'm like, I'm going to go to UCLA. And everybody laughed at me, man. Because, you know, I wasn't really uh, studious. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my journey again was how to get into UCLA. And, and then I made it. I went to Dang. SMC. Yeah. Uh, Santa Monica College first. And then I got into UCLA. And I remember like, I got so happy. Uh, my student ID, I'm doing this. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, Peace like, signs. And, oh my gosh. And I came back to Korea just to uh, show, show that I did. Show it off. Yeah, yeah. That I had no intention to become a rapper or you know, entertain none of that. So you came back to show off your student ID. I came back to show off my student ID. <laughs> Which is great. Incredibly, incredibly vindictive. Uh, <laughs> and somewhat petty. But I love yeah, it. Mad petty. I really like it. Um… So you do that, and then you end, but you ended up staying. You come back and you ended up staying, right? Yeah, I came back and same. You know, it's like a deja vu, man. But by then, like, had hip hop developed more and like an appreciation developed more. It was more like a desire for something rebellious, I think. Uh-huh. But it wasn't because Sateja uh, Idol had right. blown up. Right. You know. Right. Sort of introduction of rap music, right? Right. So after, you know, that Sotejua Idol syndrome, there's a lot of group like that. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? At least they weren't too shocked when it comes to fashion right. and, and the swag. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm like, oh, maybe. And demand for me in the industry was a lot more mm-hmm. apparent. Like they wanted me to come through and, and help them with, you know, this time… Eight bar rap. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. It wasn't no more like yo yo. But check it check it out. It was eight bar at least. <laughs> yeah. Like yo you know. Um, we have eight bar missing. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, what would you say on here? Like. And. What's like the pop. Popping slangs right now. Yeah. Like you know like. They knew. At least the producers knew what's up. So. Yeah. I kind of want you to stay a little bit more. And, and just kind of. See what could happen. See what could happen. Yeah. You know. And, and I started meeting. Running into. 
MCs out here. Yeah. At the time, the the uh, not a lot of people knew these people existed. Mm -hmm. Still, like pop music is prominent. You know what I'm saying? Right. The dance music, but there were underground scenes. They're not uh, people. They're like X Men. Mm. They didn't know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, uh, name a few like uh, Carion. These are like oh, yeah. they're like true MC, like yeah. true hip hop groups, like authentic, original hip hop. Groups are like rocking shows, doing mm -hmm. busking. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, so I started connecting with them, and and I got sucked into that scene. It was like Eight Miles, uh -huh. like the movie Eight Miles. Yeah, that yeah, scene yeah. existed, Tr like a real battle, real open mic. The things that you know, I I'm I'm familiar with in LA. It existed. Yeah. So, um, I started building my name with them. Yeah. That's how you know. That's how I got stuck, man. And and one day. You know, one of my label called me up. One of the dudes from my label called me up. Like, you got an album? And I didn't have one. So I was like, oh. The first album… That it was the old company. Yeah, yeah, five years ago. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I do. Uh, <laughs> Here. So, Drunken Tiger, the first album is actually the album… That you had originally done? Originally done. Way when early. I was in high school. What? <laughs> yeah. They just reprinted that. Wow. And they're like, where's a Korean song? I'm like, yeah. I got him. Uh -huh. You know, I was just lying. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how I made… Fake it till you make it. No, you got hip hop a lot and not no one. And those two songs, one, they're like, yo, you have to make a love song. Uh -huh. You have to make a love song. Unless you turn it in a love song, I'm not gonna… Put the album out, yeah. Put the album out. I'm like, all right, cool. So… I wanted to be the most typical. It was almost like almost like a, a big F you to the label. Mm. So I, I said, you know what? Okay. Let's be blatant. Uh -huh. Not be poetic. Let's be super blatant. Not uh -huh. nerd one hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I Just want as super yeah. clear as possible. Yeah. yeah. And to all the PDs and like, you know what I'm saying? Like the label mates and all these people like, yo, you need a Korean song. You need a Korean… Uh, which I understand, but they're like, they're telling me in order to blow up in Korea with hip hop music, you gotta do this, you gotta put this in, you gotta, put, okay, that's why I called it No You Got Hip Hop Lanya. It was actually a diss song know, to them. Which is even, do you know hip hop yeah. essentially? So they didn't know I was dissing them. Mm. You know what I mean? So those are the two songs, mm. and that's how it and did. They blew team. up. Yeah, Drunken Tiger began. Man, I mean, that's that's such a fascinating origin story. And and for our listeners, yes, that is the origin story. And then there's an entire, I don't know how many years, 20 years maybe then of, maybe of years. actually, you know, being a very, very active, I guess, official artist having put out an album and all that kind of stuff. Which is, I feel like we should have just an entire, t again, a TV show about your life because it's fascinating stuff. But I guess to bring it forward to more recent times, right? right? I mean, most recently, I mean, not even, not even that recent. I mean, you have your own label, Feel Good Music. Um, yes, there, sir. It's you, yourself, your wife, who's also an incredibly talented musician. Um, Busy and then BB right now. Yeah, BB. Is it, it's just the four of you? Right just now? four of us. Right. And um, I, I don't know. I feel like when we first met, it was probably like 2013, 14. Damn, there. time flies, man. Yeah, oh, it really Damn. flies. But that was like the first time I think that we had connected and we've just kind of seen each other on and off right. like randomly in random Yeah, spots. always show me love though, man. The, likewise, thank you so cool much. Thank you. Yeah. But um, it's been… It's been really cool to see… I guess like… I mean, you're like… To, to me like Gen 1 of like crossing over to Korea and like… Making things work out and happen here, which oh, is man. Thank you, man. incredible yeah, not... <laughs> in, in in many ways. Um, but I guess, and, and you hadn't put out music for a while, you know. Right. Um, I feel like you've had periods of taking a break. You also have a son and uh, running a company. All these other things that have been happening. But uh, most recently, you put out a new single, July 29th, I believe it July came 29th. out. July 29th. Right? Yeah. July 29th. National Tiger Day. National Tiger Day. Is it really National Tiger it's Day? It's National Tiger Day, man. I didn't know there was a day called I didn't know either. It's all accident. That's my, also my birthday. That's See, my birthday. this is like weird to me now. Like everything is accidentally I didn't plan it. I didn't plan perfectly it. aligned. Right. Okay. So on National Tiger Day, 
which is July 29th, which also happens to, to be, be your birthday. birthday. Sheesh. You put out a song called Hoshim Sur, which is love, peace. Right. Um, can you tell us about the song? I mean, I, I've read it. I've right. read the interviews. I've listened to it. Um, I've seen the music video. But curious in your own words, you know, why this song? Why now? Because also I feel like… And correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you're at a place where you put music out if and when you have something to say. Right. That's true too. But you know, um, it's not like I want to be… I'm not, I'm this you know great activist mm. revolutionary who mm. has to make a song mm -hmm. with a message. Uh, that's not my thing. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever I'm feeling at the time, I'm just expressing it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you know, I'm not really good at uh, expressing my thoughts or emotions through communication. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that's my comfort zone. You know, but. Mm. I was working on my album, full length album as Tiger JK. Mm -hmm. I have dropped Drunken Tiger. Right. You know, that's past. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hung it up. And as Tiger JK, um, I was working on my full length album. And that's when they started, like, you know, the Asian hate mm -hmm. and uh, hate crimes. And I was seeing that on Instagram and news. It was horrible, man. Yeah. And I couldn't really get into anything. And, 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 you know, you think that, oh, yo, know, that's probably, you know, even me, I was, I got my sort of uh, judgment on things. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that probably happens in those type of area or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you don't think that that's going to happen in like in the middle of LA or New York. Yeah. But I started getting calls from my friends like, yo, man, I got yelled at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I almost, you know, somebody threw a can, you know, walking on a sidewalk and boom, my sister, you know, called me up crying like, yo. She has a three-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and five-year-old, you know, son. In her neighborhood, like, she was just babysitting, hanging out with, you know… The kids. Yeah, my, hanging out with the kids. Playground. And she got mobbed up. Oh, man. By other parents. She was mobbed up by angry mob of neighbor. Yeah. Parents. Yeah. In front of their kids. Right. Like, yo… Why are you speaking? Why are you speaking English? Mm -hmm. You don't deserve to speak our language. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wildest Move thing to I've China. Heard in yeah, a while. for real. Like, no, nah, oh man. No, they didn't do that. Like, for an hour, they were following, just you know, harassing, them. harassing them, harassing them. And That's awful. She said she was really like, she felt um, helpless. Mm. She was so scared, and she wanted to fight back, but then. She was worried for, you know… The kids. The kids. Yeah. This sort of thing was happening more often. My my cousin, my friends, you know, mom like… Yeah. And I got really mad, man. At the end of the day, what can I do? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I could retweet, hashtag and all that. But at, at the end of the day, you know, I'm doing me. I'm doing things to, you know, feed my family. You know, mm -hmm. I'm angry. But, you know, really, yeah. I felt helpless. And that moment, I was like, man, I got to… Uh, I couldn't really write about anything else but that, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, it wasn't really a message thing. It was just actually a very selfish thing. I just wanted to express my anger. Mm -hmm. um, that's love, peace. And, and um, originally, the title is called Peace. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's a thin line between, you know, love and hate. You yeah. know? So, I was, you know, I, was, I, I wanted an angry music. Yeah. Angry music. And then as I was building on it, the image of, image of Malcolm X yeah. came to my head. You know what I'm saying? Um, Matt Black, brown bifocals. Um, Ma Malcolm X holding M1 carbon rifle, mm -hmm. looking out the window mm -hmm. at, at his house. You right. know what I mean? And that historical picture came to me. So, um, you know, I was expressing my anger at the same time. Uh, it's not all about like, fuck you peace and it's all about you know us Asians if you fuck with us we're gonna kill you I'm not this not what mm -hmm. I'm saying at the same time by borrowing that image I'm also saying solid solidarity mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. so and I put that in my video mm -hmm. but not a lot of people caught that references mm -hmm. you know because it's pretty old and you know I wanted my video to be very cinematic I didn't yeah. want to be preachy no, you know? it was I mean it, it looked 
it was very powerful to watch. Right. Um, and, and I think the lyrics as well. And and I think it's great that it's it's you've leveraged and you've used your art and your form of expression to touch on whatever it is that makes you mad or upset and whatever. Because I think that's the one thing that I've always sometimes had a like sometimes I wish I could just do an angry song. But I don't know what an angry song that I would sing was. It probably sound like some emo punk thing, but I don't want to do that really. Do you get angry? Of course I get angry. <laughs> like not. bro, like there are so many times where I'm like, oh, I wish I could write like a song that's just really you should do it, man. Spiteful. But then some but then I'm like, ah. Oh, no, I mean, I it's weird. Like, how am I gonna sing a, a hate song? I really hate you. Like, oh yo, that's like, a hit right there. That's like, a hit right there. Yo, don't bite. Don't bite. I, Eric Nam, next single. I really hate you. There you go. You. I really hate you. Look out for it on yeah. Amazon Prime. No, <laughs> I think… But, no, for real. I think you should do it, man. I mean, it's… Uh, one day. I want to figure out the right way to do it. Mm. But I feel like… I've always been like… Envious slightly of like… Hip-hop and rappers. Because I feel like… The form of rapping and hip-hop… Right. You know, that it really allows you to express more directly… Exactly right. what you want to say. Because you don't have to adhere directly to like a melodic kind of thing. Right. There's obviously melody in rap. But it, it, I feel like it's a lot more freeing. And so… I yeah. don't know. Personally, I'm like… I wish I could rap. But I can't. Hey guys. It's Eric. And uh, you know how these podcast ads go. We give you a spiel. Blah, 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 blah. And then at the end, we give you a promo code for a discount. But this one is a little different because this ad is for Honey. And a Honey ad doesn't give you just one promo code. A Honey ad gives you millions of promo codes. That's right, millions of promo codes in one ad. Here's how. When you shop like usual on lots of your favorite sites, Honey will automatically fill in the promo code box for you at checkout. But it won't fill it with just one code. It'll dump a ton of codes in there, every code it can find on the internet. Then it tests them out in seconds to give you one that gives you the biggest discount possible. Plus, Honey knows where to look for promo codes that are hard to find on your own. It's like getting a million promo codes from this one little podcast ad. Like, for example, I just found a promo code that saved me $5 off movie tickets that I didn't even know was possible, but it found it for me. And I saved $5, and that is a great, delicious drink at my favorite coffee store. You know? Huh. So, go ahead, get all the promo codes Honey can find at joinhoney.com slash kpop. That's joinhoney.com slash kpop. You rap, man. You got great sense of rhythm, man. I listen to all your some of your rapper, man. Natural bone rapper. You know. So, well, all right. so love peace, man. That's yeah. So nowadays world shrank. Yeah. And you know, I get to come on a beautiful platform like this. So oh, man. it was a message if there is, you know what I'm saying? I want it. I wanted my I wanted my song to be like you know how Jay Z mm. I can you know seem to uh, come into my eyes I mm -hmm. let the song cry song cry you know like I, I wanted my song to be almost like a cuss words mm. you know what I'm saying people who's going through it you know mm. however it's traveling like mm -hmm. I wanted it to at least um, give them strength mm. and and you know so I didn't want to just like cuss and like yo yeah. Kill everybody and you know buckshot. This is not what I'm saying, but you know I'm saying, let's go back to that, you know, the state of mind. Mm -hmm. M1 carving by the window posture. I'm not saying everybody grab M1 and go shoot them up. I'm saying yo, sometimes we need to get back to that state of mind, the mm -hmm. X state of mind. You know what I'm saying bilingual poet, been poetic, but no justice. So peace if you see the devil take a matcha. You know, mm -hmm. like I wanted, uh, I wanted honest, angry song. Mm -hmm. You know. But at the same time, um, it wasn't towards the haters. Like, yo. Yeah. You know, like… But at the end of the day, they're not going to listen, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was towards a people who needs this sort of uh, angry energy. Right. You know what I mean? So… And and I want you to put, okay, all the stereotypical images. Uh, maybe it is a good thing if you turn it around. Like the uh -huh. martial arts and like, yeah. okay, the beautiful Asiatic, you know what I'm saying, scenery. And yeah. I want you to put all that in and do uh, as much… Pot, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want you to uh, to pick an image that's not model minority. I've, yeah, I feel like what you're doing essentially is reclaiming what has traditionally been, been seen as… A stereotype or a caricature, but making it into something that's Thank strong you. and powerful, of course, and empowering for us. Very right. Yeah. Yeah. Eloquently put it. I man. mean, that I'm, I'm, I'm natural rapper. No, no, no. no. 
no, no, no. I like to write essays. No, <laughs> no. But but I think it's what it is. It, it's you're not advocating for violence. You're not advocating for hate. What you're saying is some for some people. And, and I think the other thing is. Feeling anger and feeling mad is an emotion that every human goes through natural. and experience. Yes. It's natural. But what it's kind of like, what can you do with that anger? Instead of just letting it fester, just own it. Saying, I am angry. I am mad. Right. And then you take a look at the things that we get angry about. What we've been made fun of for. What we've right. been looked down upon for. And we reclaim mm-hmm. it as something that we can claim as, as a strength of, for ourselves. Is that it? Beautiful. Did I get it right? Do man. I get a 95 or above? No, man. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna capture this <laughs> moment and, and use it as a skit. Wow. No, for real, man. No, man. I, I think that because I think your your lyrics are and, and and the imagery and all that, what you're trying to say is it, it's incredibly powerful. But for people who are not used to accustomed to listening and dissecting lyrics, right. to put it plainly, that's what it is. And but he does it in a much beautiful, more beautiful, a poetic way. Oh, thank you. That's 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 what I I personally thought man, that's, um, that from from, from that song. Man. No, thank of you. course, but but you said you know you were working on another album for yourself right. as as this happened. Are you still working on that album? How how is that going? I'm still working on it, and yeah, different many different styles and flows. Yeah. You know, like I'm excited. You know, what yeah. I'm saying like it's like I'm uh, reborn. Mm. You know, um, I appreciate when people you know give me compliments and 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 you know. Call me a legend and stuff like that, but you know, at the same time, I don't let that really. It's just a word for me, you know. what mm-hmm. I mean, like mm-hmm. ten full length album and all that, but you know, now, now, people, you know, what I'm saying, give me props and um, they gave me these accolades. But every album, man, I was known as um, an artist that bombed, mm. really. You know what I'm saying? Really? Yeah, huh. it was. Everybody was selling a uh, million copies. Mm-hmm. I came out during that time. Mm-hmm. I never, I was never charting. I never charted in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I was never really like the go-to guy to be invited to music show. Yeah. And and every time it was a struggle. My album was banned, or I was called called into, you know, the feds of Korea. Like <laughs> I was on TV show, like. Panels talking about me uh-huh. with me holding the mic in my white tank top, like uh-huh. yo, this is really a bad for our youth. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, how could he uh, be on stage uh-huh. just in his underwear? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we insert that photo. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was crazy time, uh-huh. man. Uh, men in blacks really happened, man. Uh-huh. I was called in the room. These people in black suit, man, they all had uh, print out. Of my lyrics, really? Yeah. Wait, what years? What Mr. year was Mr. Anderson, it? for real, man. <laughs> for what real, year I was, was calling like, what do you mean by this? Huh? It was this crazy time, man. That that I was, you know, like revolutionary. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Talking to the youth with secret, like secret language, like uh-huh. it was crazy. I'm like, no, it's just a rap, you know? Yeah. Um. Really, I would literally get called. Man. This is in the nineties. Nineties, I would get yeah. called. Two thousand, going on, going uh, during early two thousand two. Mm. Yeah. How how did you withstand that? How did you keep going in that? I let it fuel me, but at the same time, that sort of changed. Uh, you know, I told you I'm a professional liar, uh. but that changed me too. That's why I really admire. Mm-hmm. You know, people like Jesse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Admire people who get to be themselves. Uh-huh. Admire an artist or whoever. Yeah. You know, living a lie is very important. Uh, very uh, exhausting. Yeah. You know what I mean? I started changing my expressions. Uh-huh. So if you see the youthful energy, the Tiger Jacket, the rebellious, the fun, you know, the, the all the vibes and swag that made who I am and and, and uh, people love me for. If you go back and check, there's a time, there's a moment I switch up. Mm. I'm always soft, soft-spoken. Huh. You know what I'm saying? I'm always censoring myself. Mm-hmm. It's because, you know, there's some a lot of stuff that I can't really talk about. I've been abducted by alien for real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> that you know what I'm saying? Metaphorically, that happens. So I'm like, me really 
I'm not a gangster. I'm not a Superman. But really, I love this. Love this so much. Yeah. I was willing to die, like behind what I believe in. Right. Mm -hmm. So every day or every stage was my last one. I, I don't say in you know, a like really sappy like yeah. Google quotable. Like I was dying, really willing to die. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, and boom, it's like a movie. I'm being held hostage. Mm. I have other people that I need to take care of. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Tasha. Mm. If Tasha wasn't a singer and she has her own legacy and, and her own, you know, stage, I probably went crazy and just be selfish. But like I started like realizing, oh man, they're gonna hurt her. Mm. They're gonna hurt my artist. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I start training myself to be really bland mm. and not to be noticed by nobody. Yeah. So I've been working a lot, man. That's why you think that I've been gone. Like, yeah. Not put, like I was doing things very subtle, and that yeah. sort of became my persona. And yeah. And I don't know why I'm sharing these stories, man. That's what you know. You do, man. Eric, no, I'm just crazy, man. It's like a <laughs> lie detector. <It's, laughs> what's going on? Oh, did you put something? In no, there? no, 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 nothing in there. It's just coffee, man. Oh, man. Yeah, so thank you. I feel great, man, you know, sharing these stories. But yeah. that's that's what happened. I'm that's why um every interview is I'm different, you know what I mean? Like yeah. yes, great. Yeah. So now you know how are you is very it's a very complex question. Complex question. It's very me. simple, but to you it feels right. very complex. Like, what? How should I flip this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like Larry King, man. Man, I'm gonna cry soon. <laughs> Peace. No, 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 no. We're good. We're good. Um, I guess, you know, looking back on your career, I mean, you have done so much. You've won so many awards, all these different things you've done. Like, what are, what are, what's like a big highlight for you? You know, what, what's, what's one stage or one moment or a song that you're always going to be like, damn, that was awesome. I never once got into this or did this for money. Mm. Money was never in, on my mind. Yeah. I didn't really give a f about money. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I did it because I loved it. Mm. When I when I uh, first earned enough money to buy my father a car, mm -hmm. that was crazy. Oh, man. I didn't know I could make money with things I love to do. Mm -hmm. I really had no idea. And now it's like, you know, uh, kids listening right now, like, yeah. now, like they might not understand what I'm saying, but I did not get into this for money. Yeah. Um, that and… You're an artist, so you probably understand this. Like, you know, oh yeah, you know, I love your song, this and that. Like, you know, I get hype. Um, all that's cool, but there's one letter and, and there's one encounter with a, a fan. Mm -hmm. I was going through some stuff. I was going through, not some stuff, heavy stuff. And I was about to really end my life. Mm. Right? And I decided to, for some reason, that moment, listen to your song last time mm. and go. Mm. But that saved me. Mm. And that left a huge impact on me, man. Mm -hmm. um, those are the moments like… And I realized, man, you can't just like… Spew out garbage in the world. You know what yeah. I mean? That's why I started thinking more. And then I started really appreciating. Mm -hmm. Because before I got bitter, man. Like, yo, I'm really dope. I'm the best. Yeah. How come, you know, my head ain't popping. They don't know me. Like, you know, sometimes… Yeah. You blame other situations and environment. For, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Although I've been through a lot of crazy shit and mm. I got betrayed and you know I got robbed and all that, but I started thinking like, yo, there's a purpose of everything. Yeah. Maybe it's my defense mechanism, you know what I'm saying, to make make it make sense. Yeah. But those are the moments and, and made it really worthwhile. Mm. So hence not visualization. You know, you visualize to get something, right? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Your vision, you gotta want it, yeah. right? But then I don't I don't really think like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Mine's more a manifestation, uh -huh. not anticipation. So I'm already acting and responding, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To the visualization that manifested. So visualization should be something in the future, right? Right. For me, that is in the past. That's how I live. That's, this is like Marvel metaverse, multiverse thing going <laughs> Sorry, on. Sorry, <laughs> and, and, and I'm at peace and I'm really yeah. happy. I'm content. What do you, what are you manifesting these days? What like what do you you know, what are you trying to, in your timeline and how you think of things in life? What are you trying to manifest and what are you hoping for? 
I don't really hope for anything. I'm yeah. appreciating life. Uh -huh. I'm appreciating time. Man. I'm appreciating this. Mm. I, I mean it not in like this really like, you know, Zen, mm. you know, like try to come off like this Zen philosophy. You know, like really I'm a, I started appreciating the coffee made me. You know what mm. I mean? Like this, just, you know, this couch mm. that's holding me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The people I, I've met today, like, Every encounter, I feel like it's by design and I'm appreciating it. And uh -huh. if something, something goes wrong, I used to sort of like analyze and like, oh man, therefore, man, ungrateful. I yeah. put him on and he, you know, he's like really ungrateful. Did XYZ or whatever. Right. Yeah. No. I don't want anything return. I don't hope for nothing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just be content with every I'm day the way with, it is. Exactly. And and I, I, But you got to be disciplined. You can't just be like, yo, manifestation. Like… But you gotta be disciplined though. You, know, you gotta hands, put the work in. Hoshi like protection of mind. Mm. You gotta put the work in. Uh -huh. Yeah. I love the pain now. Like before I used to run away from it. Yeah. I love the struggle. I love the pain. It's part of the process, I guess, yeah. for you now. Well, um, I mean, so you have a son. Who, how, old is, how old is Jordan now? How old is he? 13. 13. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He took all my Jordans, son. <laughs> <laughs> He's big, man. He's tall as me now. Already? Yeah, already, man. It's crazy. Man. man. I don't know what they put in this food. Then, oh, man. He's, yeah, man. If I tell him to like get off the computer, man. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, go to sleep. He generally come next to me. He lifts me up. <laughs> <laughs> and places me where I belong. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. Close the door. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. What What is… Uh, I mean, what does he want to do? Or does he have a… You know… I mean, he's 13, so he's pretty young. Yeah, his perspective is different, man. Like, he has friends all over the world uh -huh. uh, through, through the internet. Internet. Yeah. Australia, you know, Germany, like everywhere. And really to them, what we all talk about is kind of crazy to them. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's, uh, uh, there's ignorance there too. Right? They got to be influenced by their parents' environment. Yeah. But you know what? They don't really understand like why people are fighting over, you know, uh, skin color. And yeah. They really don't know. Yeah. That is corny to them. Like, yeah. They don't comprehend it. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. You know? Um, and they're driven by memes. <laughs> <laughs> driven by memes and… And, and TikTok. Memes yeah. and TikTok, yeah. Memes and TikTok, but… I real I used to judge a little bit, but man, like you learn a lot from them, man. They're in a way they're more cultured than I am because because they're driven by memes and the music that's behind those memes. Oh uh, man, they got huge. She got he got a huge spectrum. Like you know, he will listen to Biggie Small, Notorious mm -hmm. B.I.G. to Def Punk to yeah. like pop rock, all that. Yeah. So you know, I'm like, man, I got you know. He opened my yeah. mind and eyes to a lot of things, man. It's like that. You 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 spend too much time and money on CG. <laughs> you have nothing memorable in your video. Oh my gosh, is he um, is he going through? I guess he's going through puberty right now. He's going through puberty, but he's going through puberty. But this kid now is too wise, man. <laughs> so he's hiding that he's going through puberty. Uh, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? Because he doesn't want to hurt my feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you know, he's like dad, you know. Uh, I want a puppy. He's acting. Yeah. He's a genius. Like pre-puberty days. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know. know. But I know because I, sometimes I catch him slip and he's like, Oh yeah, that was my dad. You know what I'm saying? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to act like I want a dog. I had to talk to him. You, you know? know? Yeah, because he gets sad. You know what yeah. I'm saying? All right. <laughs> Yo, left, left. <laughs> kill him, kill, kill him, him, kill him. <laughs> oh my God. Um, does, do you, if you were to say, Hey dad, I want to be a… A musician, mm -hmm. or does you know? Do you wish that for him? Or does he want to do anything? Have any interest he, in that, or is he? He has no interest. Uh, thank God. He but has that's no interest. yeah, yeah. I think he wants to be a director. He oh, has like a, a director's film. mind. Yeah. Okay. I think he wants to become a meme director. A meme director. Yeah. Very. It's gonna be a very lucrative job. He told me, um, movies gonna become Instagram length. I wouldn't Soon. be surprised. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he envisions. Like that, you know, nobody, nobody got time for movies. Uh -huh. You know, it's gotta be all Instagram. Movies. Jordan, if you're watching this video, we are actively hiring. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Young meme creators. Yeah. <laughs> nice spot. <the> beautiful set. <laughs> um, would, is there any… If, if he said, Hey mom, dad, actually I think I want to be a musician. Mm. Would, you, would you guys be okay with that? 
we'll support them, but yeah. you know, I will tell them all the stuff that you know that you've been that through. I, all that. I, I was abducted by aliens because of that. <laughs> no, I haven't been the same. I will, I will share all these stories. Yeah, yeah. I think music is the best when you do it as a hobby. Uh huh. You know, yeah. not not as work, man. Do you feel like music to you right now is a hobby? Not at all. Uh, yeah, I want it to be a hobby. You uh-huh. know, what I'm saying I'm trying to get to that stage. Yeah, you know that. You know that typical rapper story happened to me. You know, I uh, shared it with some platforms. Um, man, I I had like the the best artist. Mm. I, I built this uh, label. You know, with, we're we're becoming like we're becoming the new major. You know, what I'm saying the money was crazy. Yeah. And one day, boom, uh, these people got together, got together and robbed everything. Oh my god! Everything, create what they call ingam. That's your uh-huh. sort of like a fingerprint. Yeah. They forged wow. the stamp and took everything. And I was, I was homeless. Me and Tasha. Oh my gosh. I couldn't really share this story. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, nobody really gives up, and they don't believe you. Oh my god! How is Tasha and Tiger JK homeless? And and you know, it's a concept they can't really comprehend. Mm. And also, a lot of people are like, they're good. Mm. They probably got like, how can it be? How hard can it be? And they have they it got locked jacked, away. Yeah. Like, maybe five hundred k. Yeah. But no, man, we we're like homeless. Oh my! What what year was this? If you know what I mean. was around two thousand thirteen or fourteen, and that's when I made <sighs> feel good music. Feel good music was my eighth album. Uh-huh. I made millions of dollars just record sales alone. Mm. I had no idea. Oh my gosh. Not even got a dime. Because it's a company that I built with Tasha. And um, the fact that I couldn't really um, take care of my you know, staffs. Mm-hmm. I was always feeling guilty. And mm-hmm. every time my partner like, yo, we're like 200k short. Next album, I think we got to be making money. So that 200k short was always… It's that pressure. It's that pudanga. It's the pressure and guilty conscience. Because yeah. you know, I couldn't really… Um, I was feeling like, man, you know, my day ones, I want to like, you know, spoil them and, you know, show them good life. Right. But man, because they're stuck with me. They believed in me. They're struggling. But man, I found out that they got like three different foreign cars and like, and they were, it was crazy. Like, they were acting whenever I show up. They would roll up in a scooter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was staged oh my gosh. for whole, like two straight years. It was staged to take all this. You know what I mean? So that happened when I realized I made a lot of money with, with the eighth album, Feel Good Music, with, which I thought it bombed, right? Mm-hmm. And when I found out, like, you know, that sort of com- comforted me. Like, oh, I did well. Yeah. People really were checking for my music. Yeah. So hence, Feel Good Music is my label now. Yeah. I named it that mm. because of that. Mm. And, and instead of going to the press and like fighting, we decided like, yo, at the end of the day, clear conscious, we're going to go to sleep well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do nobody dirty. Yeah. And, and God gave us this talent. Tasha, me, Busy. Yo. Let's start over. Yeah. Come think of it kind of stupid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know. And during that time, man, when it rains, it pours, man. My father was diagnosed with cancer. Oh. And, you know, uh, Sorry, I had to… Yeah. yeah. No, it's all good now. You know, love. He's in a good place. Mm-hmm. And that happened. I had to battle. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we started rebuilding. Mm-hmm. Rebuilding. And that was the reason we were up uh, doing a, a van tour with MFBTY. Mm-hmm. No, because we weren't really in a situation to do anything but that. Yeah. And people really… My fans couldn't understand. Like, wow. Yeah. Tasha has a great, you know, fandom. And I, I have DT fan. And like, yeah. why are they calling themselves MFBTY? Yeah. Why are they doing this? Because we only had each other. And we were like really going through a rough time. Yeah. And there was the only way for us to sort of like deal with… Uh, grabbing a mic again. You know mm. what I'm saying? We're going through like… At least head, going through it yeah, together. Man, depression. Yeah. Almost. Oh man. And BB happened. You mm. know what I mean? BB too, man. While this happening, I'm busy. Moved to Ujongbu. We don't live in Seoul. We don't live in a scene. Like, you know, outskirts Korea. We, you know, we call it the boo. 
It's like the hood. <laughs> the boo. The boo. <laughs> we live in the Ujung boo. Okay. Basically, we're, you know, broke. Damn near homeless. Uh, our landlord's telling us to kick, you know. Get out. Get out. Yeah. We didn't have no place to uh, really do anything. Yeah. But all we know was how to make music. Yeah. So not knowing anything like, yo, we need a, we need a studio place. So what we did was me and Tasha start walking around looking for like a, a basement. Mm. And there was a church mm. near our, you know, apartment. And they didn't try to sell the church. It was just, was running fine. Something, I don't know, God maybe. Some spoke to me. I just went in. Muksanim, would you be willing to sell this spot? <laughs> <laughs> will you sell me this church? <laughs> and all this, you know, yeah. she's like, what are you, what are you crazy? Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, it is my number. Uh, yeah. It's a perfect place for me. And uh, four days later, man, she called up. Wow. Come think of it, man. Having a church in a basement, it doesn't really make sense. Uh-huh. I want you to have it. So uh-huh. she gave me half a price. This wow. kind of she prayed for me. And that's the spot. Uh-huh. We built the studio. And that's when Bibi showed up. She was in high school. She was being uh, approached by a lot of uh, major labels. But for some reason, Bibi's like, I want to stay here. Huh. Is she from the Boo as well? No, she's from like Taiwan. Like she's, you know, from um, way down south. Uh-huh. I'm like, why? Yeah. I remember me asking Bibi, like, why? But, you know, I don't have nothing, but I got my name. My name is my name, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I could help you yeah. find great… Um, let me put some, you know, give you some recommendation. And, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I make sure I protect you, you know what I'm saying? I know… You've been through it all. I've been through it all. And yeah. she's like, no, nah, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> why? Yeah. Not because of me, though. Bibi's like, because I love Tasha. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least she's honest. <laughs> yeah, I love Tasha. Yeah. That's, that's how Feel Good Music started, man. Uh-huh. Uh, BB, me, um, Marshall. And then an unofficial member of Feel Good is Marshall. Yeah. Marshall Bang. Marshall yeah. Bang, yeah. Yeah. That's our crew, man. That's that's yeah. incredible. I had no idea. Yeah, that's that was… And I, I ran into you during, uh, during those dark times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So… And it was really difficult for me to act. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I was like really dark, you know, please. That mm-hmm. was a reason. I was like, oh, what's up, man? Oh. No, I was just like, he's so mysterious and cool. <laughs> <laughs> but now I know. You're going through so much. Yeah, like it's hard. So much, yeah. Like I feel like I've been through really dark phases in my life. And it's… You can only like put on a fake smile for so much. Right. And, and be nice to people for so long. Like… Because you're going through what you're going through. You know? Especially you. Like when I run into other artists that spoke English. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, you know. Um, some sort of instant connections. And mm. you want to like just… It's like, hey. I, I've been in the island like, you know, Tom Hanks <laughs> cast away. Like I want to talk. Like I yeah. was super excited. But yeah. it was during that time. Yeah. And, and I didn't want to like… Yeah. Send out those you know, negative energies. So mm. I was like, oh, what's up, man? Uh. And during that time, man, I, I couldn't look at people in the eyes. Uh. You know? I mean, it's hard. I feel like when you go through what you've gone through, I can't imagine the extent to which you, Tasha, and all of you guys have been through. It's like, how can you come back from that, tr- even trust anybody, or even be okay, like walking around in right. public? Like, you have to, Ujim, kind of be suspicious of everything as well. Like, it's hard. It was difficult, man. Yeah. And if I look back, man, I was really like letting myself go. Mm. I was an alcoholic. It was mm. just crazy time. Like I didn't really care. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything you believed in and you, you know, um, you prayed and, and you, I was super positive spiritual dude. But like it didn't make any sense. Like mm. why now? Why mm. why the uh, why did whoever it is take my father away? And yeah. I've done nothing but good. At least try to be good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And nothing really made sense. But uh, now though, you started making sense a little bit, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was a rough time, especially for Tasha, man. You yeah. Know? It was… Man, she's a trooper too. Man, well, I mean… Sheesh. I should cry here <laughs> to make it, make it go viral. <laughs> should we all cry real quick, everybody? <laughs> Have you ever wanted to become a scuba diver? No? Me neither. 
but hop on over to our Patreon and become a diver to receive exclusive benefits like early and ad-free access to audio episodes, monthly live streams with the founders of Dive Studios, and so much more. These episodes are made possible by our divers, so thank you for keeping us going. Join us at patreon.com backslash dive studios. Thank you. All right. Um, we've, we've gone through a lot of really deep things. Thank you. I'm so looking. to liven things up, yeah. there's nothing wrong with being deep. Nothing wrong with mm. it. But to liven it up for our fans, yeah, we have some fans. fan questions. God, I feel fans. like we're doing like a heart to heart. Right? Where I'm What's like, up? Can, I was like, should, can we even put this out? All your fault, man. Why do you keep <laughs> asking me these deep questions, man? <laughs> we're gonna do a couple. Uh, uh, so make let's it see. as light as possible. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Gosh, even these are like. Okay, I try. Yeah, it's okay. like, what is Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm, you know what? Yo. Uh, okay, hold on. Another interesting question. Aqua Brain Lives or Lives says, Shut up. asks, follow up to the fart song. You have a, do you have a fart song? I have a fart song. It was a song made uh, with by uh, Jordan during MFP2I. Uh, yeah. And I taught him how to uh, mess with NPC, the yeah. sampler, and then he's the one who plugged it. With me. And it's farts. Yeah, fart. Is there a part two? Uh, he don't want to fart in he front of me no more. It. You know okay. what I mean? Like, right, he's going through… <laughs> he's like, we're going through my puberty. Dad's tripping again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> my dad Maybe he will give me… <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, you know, I'm still pre-puberty. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. Um, Alright. What did you eat for breakfast this morning from Coffee Jelly? Curry. Curry for breakfast. Cur- curry for breakfast. But it's not really a breakfast. You know what I'm saying? Right. You were saying you got up, you go to bed at 10 a.m. I go to bed at 10 a.m. So what is that? Is that like dinner for you? It's like a brunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? And it was like too heavy. So, I, you yeah. know, what I'll do is like a one scoop of rice. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And and just… A little dab of curry. Dab of curry. And I'm like… Yeah. Then, because Tasha's mom made it for me. Oh, nice. And I couldn't say no. Right. She gets hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Got to respect the elders. What's your favorite breakfast? Oh man. I just like eggs over easy with like avocado. Ooh. You know? Bougie. And maybe like a toast. Dive studio. Yeah. Man. We're all about the bouge. No man. I love avocado. <laughs> yeah? Some people hate avocado. I love, I love avocado. My, that's my thing. Some man. people avocado just hate it. Sandwich. I'm like I don't, I don't Do know. Do you squish it? I like to squish it, or I like to, or I like to make a, a guacamole you kind of thing. You know, you know, know that's yeah. you know, that's what we gotta you do. Know what's up, man? Scramble, uh, man. Uh, I I do it any type of egg. Any type I, I'll, of I'll take them all. I'll take yeah. them all. Cool. Um, I like I like just doing this. You just it that, makes me sound, feel like it's like Gordon ASMR. Ramsay or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like we're gonna swish sw- 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 it over. And then, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's raw. Say. And it's raw. This is raw. Cause it's not fried yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I always do that. And then, and then you gotta go. Like right. a little salt bay. Right. And Tasha's like, you can have it. You know? <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to make it light. <laughs> no. uh, what's a song that you're kind of obsessed with recently? Who have you listened to? Anything that you've heard recently that you're like, damn, I love this song. Uh, Shameless Plug, you know. Of course, BB. Mm. BB, man. I'm a, I'm a big fan of BB. I am too. Yeah. Uh, Life's uh, uh, X. Check it out. Yeah, Casino. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Um, BB, man. She's… Nothing fake about her. Mm. It's crazy, man. You should have BB here. Like, man, Would love she's, to. She's crazy. Would in love a good way. to. Yeah. 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 BB, you're welcome anytime. Please let us just… Oh, three songs. I can't really count. <laughs> <laughs> there was two, right? There was one. BB, Casino, BB, uh, Life's uh, X. And… Um, Recently, oh, Sochiki. Sochiki by Eric Nam. <laughs> Sochiki by Eric Nam and the wow. new joint that you put out, man. Uh, wow. Who did the video? Which one? The, the you know, the arcade video. Oh, oh, uh, Everything Sucks. Everything Sucks, man. I really love this song, man. Thank you so much. I really f-ing love it. Thank you. No, who directed the video? Uh, uh, they're like brand new, very young. Can you hook me up with it, yeah, man? Yeah, co- you gotta like, come to, man, to the States. I'm, of a song that RM featured in. Yeah. There's a beautiful way to like sort of make a video without having them feature. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, capitalize uh, uh. on it. Right. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? Hook me right. up, man. No, no. Really, I loved it. The yeah, whole thank you. Concept thank you. And you. Thank you. A week ago, right? You, yeah, yeah, very recent. One of my favorite songs. Thank you so much. You. Um, All right. I, f- I feel like we've stolen too much of your time. We've taken way too much of your time. I heard time. that a lot, man. <laughs> I heard that a lot from my dates. 
<laughs> it means it's no, over. <laughs> no, we 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 have taken oh, so man, much of PTSD, your time. PTSD, man. That's why she said, man. Damn, I think I, it's not you. It's, it's not you. <laughs> it's for um, it's it's not uh, it's for stolen. you. I have no schedules after this. <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> I'm good, well, man. dude, you're you're welcome to chill here. You could take a nap here. Yeah. We got a terrace. We got coffee. Oh, uh, you're. I mean, it's been it's been so good to see you and to talk to you. Likewise, it's like mad it's fun. been a while. It's been a while. Um, and thank you for for sharing so much. You know, like. No, thanks for asking me great questions. Though, thank man. you, thank you. I mean, I feel <laughs> like we've 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 discussed and gone over things that like I literally said I was like I wonder. What, I don't know what we're talking about. We'll probably talk about some music. Just see how you're doing. But I did not expect us to talk about everything we talked you, about. You have the gift, man. Like I never share this with anybody. Uh, well, you know what I mean? Damn. It's like… You know that feeling? Mm, I feel like mm, I was mm. constipated for a long time. <laughs> and it's like… Ah. No, for real, man. It's, wow. Well, thank Great you. Great feeling, man. I, I mean this. Thank you, know, you. I feel like, you know, like Erica Badu, Bag Lady. <laughs> I feel like that song, Bag Lady, you're going to hurt your back. Mm. I feel like you know, mm. it's, it's you know what I'm saying taking them I'm off. Lifted, yeah, yeah. I mean that means a lot, and, and I you. and I really appreciate it. And um, man, we should do this again Please, more often. Man, I'm anytime, and, anytime, and, yeah, anytime. Like you're you're welcome here anytime. We also have offices in Thank LA. You. You're welcome there anytime. Right. I Thank know you, you're man. going there sometime soon. Um, so hit us up. But I mean, anything you want to say to your fans or the listeners before we start wrapping it up? Um. Manifestation, mm. not anticipation, man. Mm. Don't be entitled mm. to, you know what I'm saying, anticipation. And try it. It's free, but try it. You know what I mean? And uh, blessings and, you know, all the good stuff, man. Stay healthy. Thank you for having me and, and who, who tolerated, <laughs> you know, my, my ramblings. Thank you. And no, thank you for having me. No, of course. I mean, your, your ramblings, I feel like there will be… It will be… What inspiring and of him, mm. like of of a, a source of strength you. or like understanding for a lot of listeners, especially for people who who may be going through a, a tough time in right. some ways, and um, so. and uh, and of course our amazing editors are great at kind of cutting things down so it like, oh, it flows shit. better. <laughs> you see her taking notes the entire time. She's like, okay. <laughs> 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 oh man. Um any I mean when can we expect more new music or a new album or is that kind of Tasha's OST okay. dropping soon. Okay, Tasha's man, OST. Yeah, man. Um Tasha's OST Baby's coming out with a crazy mm. crazy single. Mm -hmm. Look out for mm -hmm. Baby. Okay. Uh of course uh Hojim's for Love Peace remix. Right. You know oh, remix. Saying? Remix. Okay. I never talked about who's on it here. Um Lowe's Maniac one J, uh, Palo Alto, Dang. YDG, Busy, yeah. Uh, How long is the song? Like ten minutes? No, no, no. Really short, and I just gave him eight bars. You know okay, what I'm saying? okay. <laughs> but okay. yeah, man. First time talking about that too. Yeah, thank you remix for the ex dropping soon. exclusive. Thank you for the exclusive. Thank you. We got the remix dropping for that. We got BB. We got Tasha. Um, you guys are also going to be in the states soon, right? Eighty Rising, head in the cloud. Yeah. Um, festival. I might cancel on them. Oh, okay. We might take that out. Okay. You know no, 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 no. Don't okay. take it out. Like I'm trying to make myself, you know what I'm saying? Like more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I might cancel on them. You know, so I, I want them to pip this. You know what I mean? Yo, man, you got to bring more to the table. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, Delta is crazy right now. So, you yeah. know. Thank you for listening to this episode. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tiger, thank for, you. for joining Eric. us. Um, it's It's been a pleasure. You guys can, of course, see this show on YouTube. You can listen to it on all your streaming platforms. And uh, be sure to turn on your notifications, subscribe, and follow us because we have a lot more great stuff coming for you your way. And if you don't like ads, because I know we have a lot of ads. If you want to listen without ads, you can go to patreon.com slash dive studios for ad-free listening. Now, we're going to wrap it up. Right. Um, but before we do that, we have like a tradition here. And the right. guests are always asked to improvise. Mm. Any sort of outro. It could be a jingle. It could right. be a bar. It could be a sound. It could just right. be like goodbye. Okay. But whatever you want to do. Hmm. We're going to leave it up to Mr. Tiger JK. And with that, we're going to say goodbye. Can I cop… Like, can I plagiarize? Like, 
You could do it. Uh, K is what K pop Tebak show, right? We we are changing it just to Tebak now. Tebak show. Tebak show. I'm loving it. Shut up, Baba. You can't do you can't do stuff like that, right? No, we could do we could do whatever we want. Dun 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 dun. Tebak show. No, I'm just playing, man. Eric Nam. Okay. Eric Nam hit you with a bomb bomb. Hey, Eric Nam hit you with a bomb bomb. Tebak show. Peace and love. One. Hey! Peace. Thank you so much, everybody. See you next week on the Tebak Show. Bye. One. Holy jabezus, that was an incredible video, wasn't it? No? Yeah? Okay. Well, if you liked it, be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss this incredible content that we have coming for you. And if you get a moment, leave us a comment. Don't go anywhere, watch more videos, and stay healthy and happy. See you soon. Bye! Don't where are you going? Okay.